everyone and welcome to this interview with Kay Kenny. My name is Veronika Piurek and I am a curatorial intern at Alpha Art Gallery, where you can see Kay's work currently displayed and an exhibition Shifted Nature. Hello Kay, how are you today? I'm doing very well, thank you. Kay, can you tell us what is your favorite medium to work with, if you have one favorite? Well, actually, my favorite still remains drawing, although I see that as more of a, a side thing for me these days than actually making artwork that I'm going to put in a portfolio. Um, what I like about drawing is that it trains your eye. You, you really have to examine and carefully think about uh, the whole image, the object, etc., cetera, uh, details in a way that uh, really helps in photography thinking about those, all those subtle things of light and shade and shape, etc. the formal concerns. As a viewer of your work, I, I find a lot of mystery in your photographs and I absolutely love it because um, it allows me to put my own narrative into your works. And I was wondering, what is the most important thing when it comes to the relation with viewers of your works? The storyline. I'm very, very in the, not only concept, I think it has to be a combination of concept as well as aesthetics. And I'm very interested in creating an intrigue, uh, a way of drawing people in, seducing them by the beauty, by the intrigue, into the storyline itself. And all of my work has a narrative quality to it. I started out as a narrative, as an illustrator. That was my beginning in college. And um, when I moved to photography, I moved to photography because I had that ability to continue with the narrative. So you've chosen this technique because for you it was better. Um, it better served the purpose of storytelling, uh, better than painting, for example, right? Yes. At the time, painting was um, I, I moved away from the narrative. When I was an undergraduate and graduate student, painting was still um, very much an abstracted kind of, of uh, media. Uh, the introduction of figurative work, of um, narrative work in painting is much more recent. But by that time, I had discovered photography and moved into photography and have been very happy in photography, particularly in this digital age when I have the ability to construct an image. Let's talk about um, the photographs that are currently displayed at Alpha Art Gallery Exhibition Shifted Nature. So this is your series Stone Goddess and you took Greek and Roman sculptures from the Metropolitan Museum and you basically place them somewhere elsewhere in the United States. So they act as this kind of avatars that are looking at what we are doing and what the whole humanity is doing with the world. Um, there is a lot of symbolism in your work. Um, can you tell us why did you have chosen this sculpture of Greeks and Romans? Well, the reason I chose Greek and Roman was basically because I had read an awful lot of the history of Greek and Roman uh, literature, as well as acknowledging that they were, for us in the Western world, the seat of our democracy, how we conceive democracy. And so seeing that important legacy and seeing what was happening in our government at this time, to our earth at this time, became more and more uh, a concern to me as, and the Greek and Roman sculptures related to that fall of Rome, the fall of Greek uh, democracy. Those issues, looking back at a time, um, were critical to me in creating this avatar concept. And I'm particularly concerned with the ecology of what's happening today. Mm -hmm. Our government may survive, thank God we're finished with a particular president, <laughs> but um, we have a long ways to go to salvage what's happened to our earth. And that is one of the my concerns. So do you think what we are observing right now, it's kind of what's gonna happen, what, what have happened with the Greeks and Roman, like this is the end of uh, one of the biggest civilization? Yes. Mm. And when I set those goddesses in those different sites, uh, actually, a lot of them are pretty awful. Uh, for instance, 
There's a large copper mine. One of the goddesses is, stand, is standing in front of an abandoned copper mine in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Another goddess is um, looking at a, a horrible swamp in Florida. A um, lot of options there in terms of what we need to clean up and think about. I wonder if the values um, important in the ancient times are they still relevant to us today or did they completely change? What do you think? No, I think our values are very similar. I don't think human nature has changed that dramatically. Uh, Cultures change, of course. And as cultures change, uh, different uses of language, different ways of of thinking about uh, other ethnic groups, all of these things are, you know, will shift. Mm -hmm. Our human nature is not really terribly different from the Romans. And one of the things that we we need to really think about is how we undervalue their intelligence and look back and see that their mistakes could be our mistakes. It's not as if things have changed that dramatically in the way people function in the world that uh, what happened way back then was just a case of people not really have being as sophisticated as we are today. Yes, I totally agree and I think that um, we can learn a lot from our ancestors and from the mistakes from the past. I want to ask you now about the choice of a woman because you've chosen to show us only um, sculptures of the goddess. Um, Who are these divine goddess for you? Uh, well, it's an interesting thing. When I went into the Metropolitan Museum, uh, one of the things that I noticed was that an awful lot of the sculptures that of women were in poses of uh, saddened, concerned. Uh, there was a, a sense of, uh, of worry and also sometimes a sense of being a victim. Whereas the male sculptures, that wasn't true. They were more warrior-like and uh, leadership-looking, demanding, hierarchical. And I, I thought the females were a better choice. The second thing is that uh, we tend to think of nature as mother nature. So female avatars made more sense. Yes, totally. It makes sense. <laughs> um, you mentioned the goddess uh, as the victims, but I see them more as survivors, but this is my perception. And I also see a lot of repetitive motifs in your works, like water, sharks, fishes. Can you tell us more about it? The shark one was really pretty funny. I I was in the aquarium in the Pittsburgh Aquarium, Pittsburgh, New York, York, uh, Pennsylvania. And one of the things that I noticed was how all these people were busy photographing each themselves or eating their snacks or whatever, uh, being reflected in the in the pool with these fish who were being totally ignored. Um, so I felt that was pretty funny and, and critical to this whole idea that I was working with. And secondly, sharks are just a, an amazing, amazing creatures. They have been around since prehistoric times. Not many other animals that have survived that long. So uh, I felt that was pretty critical as well as um, a, another symbol of our Earth of survival. In one of your photographs, goddess number one, um, there are people taking pictures of themselves while the goddess is right behind them. And what struck me the most in, on this picture is the ignorance of these people. And I thought this is such a sign of our times where um, we are not focused anymore on what's really important and what's like right next to us. But uh, instead we are focused on ourselves and taking pictures and taking um, selfies. Yeah. I think it's become more so with the whole uh, selfie camera business. <laughs> <laughs> and with selfie sticks and all of that, totally. Another photograph of your skate uh, that strike me is um, Goddess 10. And this is the photograph where we see the back of a goddess and she's looking at the city landscape at night and um, there is a banner with a man staring back at her. Um, there is something very dramatic about the night landscape, about the night sky, about the moon. Um, what do you think she's thinking and what is she looking at? Well, that, 
was a Frank picture, and it really is pretty much what you see. That was a billboard that was in New York City on what we call the High Line. And when I photographed that, and then I played that goddess there because I, I, of all these images, that is the most feminist. It is really a combination of she's reaching for the, what we, you know, one of our, our main images in New York City, the Empire State Building, as if it were the Statue of Liberty. And the man's gaze is so much about the male gaze. And she's, she's waking up, she's defying it. And so in a sense, this is going beyond just the other goddesses, which were concerned mainly with nature. This one is going to be into a different area entirely, um, which has to do with, as I said, feminist issues. I find a lot of chaos in your works. Um, some of your photographs are almost like an apocalyptic vision of what's going to happen with, with our world, with the environment. Um, do you think there is still hope for us, as for humanity, um, if we change, or maybe the changes are already happening? I, I hope it's changing. We, I've been, I've been through this before in the '70s, uh, where there was a big push for change, mm. and then receded back in the '90s, and now it's pushing forward, and it's a few steps back and a few steps forward. There's no perfect answer to an awful lot of our problems and questions. Um, for instance, we talk about the need for electric cars. We talk about the need for uh, alternative energy, but there are back problems to that one too. Uh, the mining of precious metals, for instance, and lithium and the destruction there of various uh, lands as a result of lithium mining. So these are as much as we can hope, we have so many things to work out. And we move a few steps forward and then we have to pause and say, oh my God. And in the 70s, there was a huge shift to a nuclear energy. And then we discovered what a disaster that was. So I think this is what your photographs do. I mean, they can speak about so many different things. Um, of course, it depends from the viewer, but um, they're very captivating, so they catch our attention, we start to look closely with more attention, um, we start to reflect on what we are seeing, and then, you know, from there we can we can uh, realize many things about environment, about our future, about what we are focusing on, um, are we wasting our time or not? Um, that's very interesting. I hope so. I do realize that part of them, um, because they are very pretty in a sense, mm -hmm. um, that it could be easy to dismiss them. What I'm hoping is that people will look at them and say, well, what in the world is she doing? What is she thinking here? Read the statement and begin to see them in a different way. I think they will because your photographs are really hypnotizing. Um, we are pulled into this world that you've created and it's fascinating. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, I want to ask you now uh, about your artistic process, uh, especially when it comes to the preparation of your photographs and of uh, shooting them. I know that uh, when you do the night photography, um, your process of preparation is very detailed and it's very long. Um, can you tell us more about it? Well, but night, I've been doing night photography for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to the goddess images, that's what I was doing was rural night photography. And rural night photography is a very different experience from working with an urban area where you have ambient light. So what I would do is, first off, I would have to scout during the day mm -hmm. because I have to see where I'm going. And I also have to recognize that I have access to a particular area at night. Um, that's another issue. And, and then, of course, there are the, the concerns about what the weather will be that night. Mm -hmm. I have think not only of the of something like the dew point or whether it'll rain, but I also have to think about where the moon will be. Mm -hmm. Moons can be very, very bright. People have no idea when you leave a camera open for a long period of time how much it can look like the middle of the day. Of course, because people just see the moon in the city or even don't see it, you know, with the, all of the lights of this. And when I go out into, the, into a rural area, I'm looking for not only that, but the direction that I'm facing because the stars move a certain way and I have to know where my north and south are and so forth. 
So I have to make, think about through all of that. And then finally, I have to know that if I go onto that property at night, that the owner of the property will be okay with it. Yes. <laughs> Sure. That's another issue um, because um, the camera is set up, often the camera is set up uh, for long periods of time. I use a flashlight a lot to illuminate the foreground mm. and so I have to be able to move around in that area with a flashlight and if I don't want to be caught by the camera, I wear black and uh, I can do a pretty good job of never being seen by the camera. But. Uh, in that case, I also have to think about, well, am I going to worry about what I'm stepping on? You know, who could be, I'm just going to step on. I nearly stepped on the one what? time. <laughs> <laughs> so there are lots of things you think about, but the most important thing is that because of the digital camera, I'm now able to take the two shots. And using the digital camera, I can take an image, a very short image with a very high ISO to capture the stars without having them move. And then I can take a longer image with me wandering around in the field. And then I can put those two images together because otherwise I would have star streaking across the sky, which are, it's interesting in its own right, but not at all what I'd like to see. Um, it gets be very busy. So, and then on top of that, um, one of the goddess images, I would have to go, of course, take the image of the goddess in a different light entirely and then place the image into the scene and work with the within photoshop shading it shadowing it and i have to think about the time of day i go into the met also that was another issue so when you're working on the goddess series um did you already have in mind where will you put each goddess or did you experiment it after taking the pictures of the locations I spent a lot of time photographing um, in the Met at different times a day. I have a lot of, a whole, a huge file of just goddess photos that I've taken. And interestingly enough, I try to take them other places besides the Metropolitan Museum. And I was in Italy thinking I would get lots of goddess images. And what I discovered was that most of them had lost their heads. Yes. <laughs> That's very sad. Or are they fine with the bodies? <laughs> so, um, anyway, so the, the men actually was one of the best resources for those kinds of photos. <laughs> okay, I have one last question left. Um, do you remember your first time in the photography darkroom? Can you tell us when it was and where? This is a pretty absurd story. <laughs> when I, they, it was before they became the um, the art school that they are now. They were just in the process of integrating all the different art programs in Rutgers, which is quite spread out, being a state university, into one program. And so at that time, I was part of the first real group of graduate students. And the first group that included women. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is going along a long time. history. <laughs> So there were only seven of us. It was just a very small group, and, and um, several of us were women, which was a big deal for these guys. But I, I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go, and I thought, you know, I've been photographing for since I was a kid. Maybe I should learn how to use the darkroom to become more serious. So I talked to one of the teachers, and they said, oh, yeah, well, we have a darkroom. It's down the hall. Go down there, and you'll see the information is on the, on the wall, and uh, you can develop your prints. This is black and white. So I go down the hall, and I go into this room, and there's some chemicals, and there's a trays, and I have no idea what I'm doing, absolutely none. So I follow the instructions, and I put the print in the tray for the developer, and I get so excited, I turn the light on to see it. Well, if you know something about that, that's to do. <laughs> this is a lovely story. But uh, anyway, uh, Rutgers has, become a lot more professional since then with their photography department. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with me today. Um, I wish you all the best, Kate. Wonderful to talk to you, Veronica. My pleasure. <laughs> Bye. Bye.